first speaker is an incredible activist from Nebraska. Jane Cleave does a lot of stuff. She serves on the national board of our revolution. She's the founder and president of Bold Alliance, a group of rural states working to protect our land and water. And as chair of the Nebraska Democratic Party, uh, she's just written a new book called Harvest the Vote. That's a snappy title. Give it up for Harvest the Vote again, everybody. Here to tell us about that and much more. Give it up for Jane Cleave. Okay. Hey. Uh, so just one thing, because I have my family in the audience, if I didn't correct the pronunciation of our last name, they would literally me. So it's Cleb, just so everybody out there in the universe knows. Um, I'm happy to be here with you. I am the chair of the Nebraska Democratic Party, and I'm a proud founding board member, along with Jim Hightower, wherever he just went. Uh, and we decided to create our revolution, not because of one person, but because of all of us. And I think it's critical for us to remember that, that we decided that it was not only important to work on all the issues that we deeply care about. For me, in particular, I really want action on climate change. Quite frankly, I'm tired. I'm tired create climate action but still build out new fossil fuel projects and I'm here to say that that's impossible. If we're going to take action on climate change, that means ending fossil fuel pipelines, that means ending fracking, that means the development of coal, right? You can't say you're going to solve climate change and then on the other hand continue to give big handouts to big oil. So that's one of the reasons why I joined our revolution. The other reason I joined the Our Revolution Board was because we can't only have one foot in the streets and in my case in Nebraska, in the fields, we also have to have one foot in the party. We have got to transform the Democratic Party. There has to be more people like us in those rooms when we're making decisions about which candidates we're gonna support. How are we gonna do grassroots organizing? What states are we gonna invest in? For too long, our party, which is what I talk about in my book, Harvest the Vote, we have adhere to this wiring of the electoral map that somehow the blue states and a few swing states sprinkled in are the only states that matter. Well, guess what? 50% of our population is going to start controlling 84 U.S. senators because the vast majority of our populations are going to be concentrated in the coast and in states like Colorado. So if you want our Supreme Court to continue to look like it does, not representing America, if you want the U.S. Senate to continue to look like it does, not representing America, if you want governors all across the United States to continue to looking like what they do, which looks like not America, then you have to organize in rural communities. And we used to win in our rural communities. The same values that we hold as the Democratic Party, which is that we believe that we all do better when we all do better, a saying that Senator Paul Wellstone carried on but was actually created by Jim Hightower's father, a little trivia point for you. If we truly believe that, then we can't leave rural people behind. And that's what our party has done, that's what political movements have done, and that's what we in Nebraska showed how we can punch above our weight. We fought 10 years ago against the Keystone XL pipeline. And we're continuing to fight against the Keystone XL pipeline. And if the Democratic Party and if the environmental community decided when we first took that fight on, if they decided that they were going to fight that the same way they always have, which was to walk the halls of Congress, hold big steak dinners with members of Congress, getting them on their side, doing rallies in D.C. to convince President Obama to be on their side, we would have lost. The environmental community joined hands with rural farmers, with ranchers, and with tribal nations, and we decided that we were going to do politics differently. We decided that we were going to take the fight not only to President Obama in Washington, D.C., but we were going to organize in farm country, in rural country, on the reservation, and we were going to organize the people who were directly impacted. The only way we win is if we start organizing the people who are hurting. Right. And the only way we win is if we start showing up when they're hurting and when we stand with them shoulder to shoulder to fight. So I wanted to read, I wanted to read just from one section of my book because it's the section where I talk about Senator Sanders. And I thought you guys would appreciate that. Um, and I want to, you know, if you make a donation, $20 to Our Revolution today, you get one of my books, and I'll be happy to sign it afterwards. I'll be over there in the corner, as they say. I don't have my glasses, so oh, Lord. All right. 
I'm not a policymaker, but I do have a unique perspective based on my involvement in the fight against the Keystone XL pipeline. My work as an organizer in my personal life as a neighbor in rural America who listens to what folks are saying. Maybe it would be easier if we could just close a coal plant and build more wind and solar to power our communities and that would be the end of the story. There are people and families in land involved, so it's not that easy. Our country has allowed big corporations to control the types of energy favored. When the energy is generated and who it's sold to. We've been told we don't get a say in the process. We've been told that because we flip a light switch and the power goes on to our homes, then energy's there and it's reliable, so we don't get a say. This system worked for us for decades, but now the entire equation has to be flipped because we know the devastation of climate change brings to our communities with the continued fossil fuel development. In a 2016 exchange with coal workers, Senator Bernie Sanders nailed the response to climate change. He made it clear that he believed in climate change and acknowledged that jobs in the coal industry have been declining since the 70s. He then looked at a young coal miner and said, I do not hold this gentleman and the coal workers responsible for climate change. In fact, I think these guys are heroes. I grew up in a rent controlled apartment and I will never forget the piles of coal that kept my house warm. Sanders then went on to say that our nation must make good on the, pump, on the pensions that the coal miners earned. He also stressed the need to invest money into communities devastated by climate change. We can acknowledge the hard work and not leave anyone behind and make it clear that we stand where we stand on the changes that we must make now. Why this story is so important is because for too long as progressive, progressives, we have demonized those who work in the oil and coal industry. And they're hurting just as much as other families are as well. We don't decide that we're going to transform our energy system by building out more clean energy with wind and solar, and then decide that those families who work to keep our lights on for decades are going to be left behind. People in our revolution believe that we bring everybody up together, right? And that we build movement from the grassroots. And I'll just close with this very brief story. I was with a bunch of farmers, we're fighting a bunch of Costco chicken plants, right? Costco's come into states like Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas. They've decided that they can go into small communities because they don't hold a lot of power, or so they think. And they think your main streets are dying, so we'll come in and we'll provide a lot of jobs, we'll keep your schools open, etc. It's all, of course, a lie. Costco wants to come into a small town and process two million chickens a week. Two million chickens a week. So those $5 rotisserie chickens that you're buying, please don't buy them. Buy from a local farmer. <coughs> so a bunch of farmers decided they were going to fight back. These contracts that they put on our family farmer's shoulders are unfair. So we're organizing. I follow his pickup truck into town. He has two bumper stickers on his pickup truck. One is of the Tea Party. And, is, and there's one that has kind of a thing of a, pencil, a broken pencil that says, if you think guns kill people, then you think pencils misspell words. Okay, so we were just talking about organizing, protecting property rights, water, all on the same page. I get out of my minivan, he gets out of his pickup truck, he comes over, and he says, so, what do you think of my bumper stickers? In that moment, as a progressive, I could have started yelling at him. I could have told him that I think his bumper stickers sucked, and that I thought that the Tea Party has ruined the Republican Party, and that the NRA is really just a big gun lobby. Instead, I put my arm around him, gave a chuckle, and said, look, we're probably not gonna agree on gun reform tonight, but I'm here standing with you to protect your property rights and to protect our water, so let's start there. And that's what we do as progressives. We find common ground, we bring people along. The only way that we are gonna win elections and the only way that we're gonna get good people in office again is if we start to transform hearts and minds. And that means being on the streets and in the fields and telling our stories and bringing people along with us. So thank you, thank you to our revolution. When we organize, we when we organize, we and we would have never won Keystone XL unless we organized at the grassroots level. When we organize, we win. We win. We win. We win. All right, give it up for Jane Cleb, everybody. Yeah.